Hello, welcome to another episode of LOL, I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to have fun with it, where every episode is a metaphor for the life that we're living in 2020. So on our last episode, we worked with jackfruit, which I loved. I love the fruit. I love the seed. I even love the chewy tendrils that I did not cook enough. But today we're going to go to the store again and we're going to see what else is in stock for us to play with. Let's get shopping. I saw some star fruit. There was dragon fruit, two different kinds. I saw some beautiful big beans still in their shell. Haba beans, maybe they're related to fava beans. Then I saw a fuzzy green Mexican chayote. They looked so fun and I really wanted to try them, but another thing caught my eye. I will be attempting to break the monotony of my life routines with the introduction of a brand new ingredient that I've never cooked with before. Dinosaur eggs. Just kidding. They're called mame. Mame sapote. I don't know if I'm saying that right at all. A species of tree native to Cuba and Central America, commonly eaten in many Latin American countries. The fruit, technically a berry, is about four to 10 inches long, three to five inches wide, flesh ranging in color from pink to orange to red. The brown skin has a texture somewhat between sandpaper and fuzz on a peach. These kind of remind me of mangoes, if mangoes somehow fossilized into dinosaur egg looking things. At $2.99 a pound, Three of these babies cost me $16 exactly. Not budget eats, and I hope they taste good again. For your daily moment of zen, I encourage you to go buy a mame fruit. It smells like I'm in a forest, and it just rained maybe six hours ago, and the leaves are decaying slowly around the trunk of the trees. The soil is a little bit damp, and a little bit soggy if you press too hard with your feet. Inhale deeply and exhale deeply and imagine yourself in a faraway landscape where you can actually hear birds sing without car horns every five seconds. So let's cut one open. I think we've hit a bit of a speed bump. I think this isn't as ripe as it should be. So apparently when it's properly ripe, the fruit should have a give to it, kind of like an avocado that's ripe. That's not, that's not the sound of a soft avocado, is it? I don't know what I'm doing, but that's okay. I do see that underneath the skin, they have a sweet potato-like bright orange flesh which I'm taking as a good sign because when they're not ripe, they're apparently very green inside. And there's no going back now that we've made a cut in it. So I'm just gonna keep cutting. Okay. Well, there you have it, folks. That's what a underripe mame fruit looks like inside. Obviously did a very poor job picking my fruit today, but it smells really nice inside actually. It smells like almonds. It smells like amaretto. The flesh is very firm. It is not creamy at all. It is not soft at all, but let's peel a little bit of this. Let's cut a chunk and let's taste it. It looks completely like a sweet potato in its raw form. It even has the kind of fibrous strings running through it. Let's give it a taste, shall we? It is very chalky and bland, very starchy. Exactly like biting into a raw sweet potato. If it looks like a sweet potato and it tastes like a sweet potato, why don't we just treat it like a sweet potato? So I'm gonna go ahead, finish trimming this one up. I'm gonna peel it until all the fibrous parts of the skin are gone. Then de-seed it, chop it up. What? Can someone explain to me why a seed has already sprouted, but the fruit doesn't taste ripe? Please? It does not make sense. So here is half of our huge mame chopped up. Let's give these a little boil, huh? 
So for the boiled version of mame, we're just gonna put them in a pot of water, a little bit of salt, and cook them until they're tender and give a taste, and then I'll decide what we can do with them. For the other half of our mame, I'm going to cut it into wedges and we're going to toss it in a little bit of olive oil and seasoning. A little bit of salt. And I found some really old dried out rosemary in my fridge. This smells like the forest too. Maybe they were meant to be together. So a little rosemary, because rosemary always makes me feel prettier. When roasting veggies, always make sure that you're spacing them out far apart on the sheet tray so that each individual piece gets exposed to the heat evenly. That's how you get nice and toasty edges. And we're gonna slide it into a 375 oven and let them roast into fries. Yes, I know it's 90 plus degrees outside, and yes, I know I should not be turning on the oven right now, but we're gonna do this in the name of science. So our mame has been boiling for about 15 minutes. Let's check to see how they're doing. Ooh, tender. We have our boiled mame still steaming from the pot. Let's try this. It smells a little bit like a russet potato, a sweet potato, toasted almonds. It looks like a sweet potato on the inside. Very fibrous, kind of stringy. The interesting thing about it is its texture. It's very starchy. I smushed it between my fingers and it's like glue. And it tastes very sticky as well. And I'm thinking if I boil this in a mixture of coconut milk and sugar, this could be a very delicious dessert. So, mame coconut sticky rice porridge? That kind of sounds delightful. So for the sticky rice, we're going to rinse the rice until the water is mostly clear. We're gonna let it soak in that water for at least half an hour. And then we're gonna drain it. We're going to set it over a pot of boiling water with a strainer up top to hold the rice. And we're gonna lid it. We're gonna let that rice just steam in that warm, hot, wet environment until it's nice and sticky and delicious. In the meantime, we're going to drain out our mame that's been boiled. We'll add some coconut milk to it. We'll add some sugar to it. Definitely let that cook until it's nice and creamy and sugary and rich with coconut creaminess. And then we put the two together. 20 minutes are up. We're going to give these a flip. We're going to test to see how tender they are. Ooh, they're getting crispy on the other side. Yes, that is exactly what I want to see. Yeah. They're knife tender but I don't think they're quite as creamy on the inside yet. So maybe 15 minutes more and we'll check that. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna think up of a dipping sauce for these fries because they need a little bit of help in the flavor department. Ketchup, mayo, red onion, a little squeeze of lemon juice, salt and pepper, really whatever else you want in it. Easy peasy special sauce. This looks pretty good to me. Basically anything that has mayo in it has my name on it. I think that's gonna go great with these fries. Here are our golden rosemary mame fries. They smell good. They smell like rosemary and toastiness. Nicely seasoned, freshly cracked black pepper, nicely salted. Guys, it is very crispy. Only a metal utensil will do this crispiness justice on the microphone. Let's have a taste. Interesting. It's smooth with a little bit of fibrousness to it, but not stringiness. It's got age, it's got wisdom, it knows what's gonna happen to the future. That's what it tastes like. The moment of truth has arrived. Our mame rosemary French fry has become a vehicle for this special sauce, which I'm not complaining about. It tastes really good because mayo, how could you not? Tastes good when you put mayo in it. Aaron, do you wanna come try some unripe mame fruit fries? Mm. 
Mmm. Mmm. What do you think about the fries on its own? These are great. For me, fries are all about texture. And these deliver? Mm hmm Wow. Because the rosemary is a really great addition. These have a better chew than sweet potato fries. And I think a better flavor with your seasonings. So I'm gonna give it an eight without the sauce and then wow. a nine with the sauce. Holy schmoles. Mm -hmm. I like them. They're growing on me. I'm like kind of addicted now to this texture. And to the mayo, obviously. These have been stewing away for about half an hour and the coconut milk and sugar has reduced down to a nice thick syrup. It's absorbed a lot of the nice coconutty flavors and it's lightly sweetened and thoroughly creamy now. Yep, still a pure block of starch inside. I gotta say what I'm most surprised by in terms of cooking with a mame is that it doesn't really break down. The shape is perfect retention. It's exactly the shapes that I cut them into and they have not fallen apart at all despite being boiled for 20 minutes and then stewed for another 30 plus. So solid. It's like what I want my best friend to be. Dependable, through and through. Because the mame is pretty bland, I'm going to go ahead and season with some pumpkin pie spice and some vanilla extract. I think because it's so similar to sweet potato in look and texture that it would do really well with these wintry autumny spices. So just give that a stir and we'll serve it up along with our rice. The smell of rice has got to be in one of my top favorite smells on earth. And we got it drizzle it with some sweetened condensed milk because why not? Mamma mia. And then we put some pumpkin pie spice and then we doused it in a little bit of milk just to soften everything up and make it soupier. Dessert is always my favorite. A little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Aaron, you have to try this. Is it sticky rice? It's sticky rice. Oh, I don't know if I can run faster over it than I did last time. Oh my God, this looks so good. Oh man. Well, I shouldn't have rated that last dish so high because now I have to rate this one an 11. Wow. Is it because you love sweet sticky rice things? It probably is, but this version of it is excellent too. That is a great flavor combination of the mummy. More. Go enjoy. Mm-hmm. I have to cook one more thing. So this is definitely super delicious. It's super starchy, but super creamy. It's a little bit sweet now. It really brings out that natural earthiness that's in the mame, but combines it with that rich fattiness of coconut and sugar. It's kind of like a rice pudding, deconstructed and extra fibrous. So Aaron really liked it. And I have to say, it's not bad, not bad. How about we cook one more thing? So when I boiled that mame fruit, I took about a third of it and set it aside. And I'm thinking we should use this to make a sweet and sour pork using this as pork. I'm thinking because it holds its shape so well and it doesn't really disintegrate, it could be a really nice meat substitute. It's very starchy, very filling, and very meaty almost in how solid it is. So for the sweet and sour pork, pork, we're going to take our cubed boiled mame and we're going to take some cubed onions and apples that have been peeled and chopped plus a little bit of salt and some cornstarch and then we just toss until it's all evenly coated heat up our pan drop in a little bit of oil and let it go and in the meantime we'll whip up our sauce gonna grate some ginger garlic Add a little bit of ketchup, a little pour of rice wine vinegar, a little bit of soy sauce, and a little touch of sugar to taste. A little bit of black pepper and salt. Now give it a stirry stir. Mmm, ketchup soup. Delicious. Once things are looking nicely golden and toasty, we're gonna hit it with the sauce. Pour it into the pan and let it cook until it's nice and syrupy.
looks great. I'm proud of myself. It smells pretty good. Could have fooled me. Looks like it could be pork. You never know. It's time to taste it. I'm gonna get a bite with all three. Mame, red onions, and apple. The apple is still crunchy. Mmm. I like that. Aaron, will you come taste? You should get a bite with apple and mame and red onions for the full flavor combo. No meat. No meat. All right. You could serve that as dessert. It's a dessert? It's a dessert. <laughs> I, That's I not was what I intended. As a hot dessert, I rate it a nine. Wow. Yes. And as a stir fry, that's not dessert? <laughs> <laughs> it's too sweet for me. I'm gonna give this one a nine too. It's really good. I love the texture of it. What's your favorite today out of the three? Sticky rice, for sure. Well, that was an adventure. I started the day by looking at Mame and deciding, let's take it easy on myself today. Let's buy this, crack it open, put it in a smoothie, make a milkshake out of it, maybe top it with some yogurt and mangoes and call it a day. Instead, I bought unripe mame and proceeded to salvage what I could. And we ended up with three fantastic dishes. All the recipes that we made today can be made with potatoes, sweet potatoes, taro, plantains even. Ooh, I've never cooked with plantains before. Maybe a third episode. Stay hydrated, take care of yourselves, feed yourself good things, and I'll see you next time.